everyone, and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video, we're going to start to take a look at claims-based authorization. So to start with, let's take an in-depth look at claims. Claims are an object that have several different properties on them, like type, value, and issuer. Those are the three primary properties on a claim that we are going to be concerned with, but there are some additional properties like original issuer, properties, subject, and value type. Now to find out what the claims are on a currently logged in user, we can actually use the user object that is a property on the controller base, and on the user property there is a claims property. And this is going to contain a, an I enumerable of claims. It's going to be a list of claims on the current user. Now additionally, we can use the user manager and of course pass in as a type parameter some sort of class that inherits from identity user. And on the user manager we can get stored claims, we can add stored claims, and we can remove stored claims. Now this is a particular distinction between just claims and stored claims that I want to make right now because you guys are going to see this a little bit more in action as we move into this video. So let's hop into our Visual Studio window and let's take an in-depth look at claims. So for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and comment out the authorize attribute on our uh, member home controller. So let's comment that out. And I'm going to set a breakpoint on the return view of our index action. And I'm going to go ahead and create a constructor on here to start bringing in our user manager. So CTOR, and let's bring in our user manager. And we need to pass in the type parameter of application user. And call this our user manager parameter. Bring in some namespaces. And of course, we need to assign it to a private variable here. I'm going to say underscore user manager. Let's create that private variable. Okay. Now, down here in our index action, I'm not going to use the user manager just yet. I'm going to save that for a little bit later. Instead, let's take a look at the claims that are on our currently logged in user. So I'm just going to go to user.claims. Okay, pretty simple. Let's go ahead and save that and let's run our application. And now the first thing I want you to take note of is that I have not yet logged in. And previous to this, I went ahead and cleared out my cookies. So I have no record of who, uh, of any uh, time that I've logged in using this browser. So my application will think that I am an anonymous user. Let's go ahead and navigate to our member home. And this, of course, is going to take us to the index action. And let's take a look at what's inside of this claims variable. We can see that if we go down to the results view, it's empty. Enumeration yielded no results. So we have no actual claims for an anonymous user. Let's go ahead and continue through our application. That's going to, of course, pop up the this is a members only section, which is the index view that we should have. Now let's go ahead and log in. And I'm going to use the members index, uh, login. There we go. And let me log in with my super secret account. Steve at Contoso. Looks like I spelled it wrong at one point. And remember me, save the cookies. Let's go ahead and log in. All right, and I went right into our index action on our home controller, so I know I logged in properly. Everything passed on that. Now let's see what happens when I go to the member home index action. Now let's inspect what's on our claims variable here. And we can see that under the results view, I have five claims. And you'll notice that this comes as a pair. We can see we have the name identifier, which is this big long uh, schema XML namespace here of schemas.xmlsoap.org ws2005 forward slash 05 identity forward slash claims name identifier. And you can see that the value is C4DEC96A. That's what it starts with, and it's big long string like this. 
Well, that name identifier is actually the ID for me. And I can show you this if we go to our Contoso database here. And let's take a look at the users table. Go to view the data here. And under the ID, let's take a look at the first little set of characters here, C4DEC96A. And if we look over here under claims, there, oops, that first one there, C4DEC96A. So this ID here is matching the ID of me as I'm logged in. And we can see there's another value pair here of uh, this XML namespace here, name, and then my email account, which is stevecontoso.com. Next up, we have a security stamp, and then we have some roles here. We have a role of admin, a role of employee, and a role of member. So really, a role is nothing more than a claim. Is a claim of the role type in the XML namespace here, and then an admin as the actual value. Same thing for employee and member. We just have multiple different role claims here on the user. Now if we just dig in a little deeper, and I'm just going to expand out on one of these claims here, we can see that the issuer is a local authority, the original issuer is also local authority, there are no properties currently, the subject is actually me, it kind of takes you back to me as the subject of that particular claim. So that's what the subject is, it's just the person basically. And then we have the type, is there's that XML namespace that we see for name identifier, there's the value, and the value type is a string. So we're using, once again, a, the W3 XML, names, uh, XML schema of type string to identify this value type. Now the reason for these different value types as having, uh, you know, pointing to some sort of XML schema or some sort of namespace is because these create a universal naming scheme that other platforms can read because we may want to know the type as name identifier, but perhaps it's some other issuer, like Google or Facebook. One of those other locations will need to be able to pass in a particular strongly named type so that when I pick it up in my application, I can use that same XML schema to identify the same type of name identifier. And that's how you have some universal uh, hard typing or uh, strict typing be that goes across all the different issuers of these claims. So now that we've seen what the claims look like on our user property, let's see what we can do with the user manager that we injected here. I'm gonna go ahead and comment out our current claims variable. And I'm gonna de declare another one here called claims and let's use the user manager and I'm going to get the I'm going to use the get claims async and now the get claims async method requires an application user and unfortunately if I tried to just use the user property that's on our controller base this is actually a claims principle so user is a claims principle. It is not an application user. So in fact, I need to do something else entirely. I need to get the user either out of the database directly, or I can just, of course, use the user manager. Find by, and I'm gonna use the name, and I'll show you why in just a moment here. I can actually use find by name async, and I can pass in the user dot identity name and that will give me that's essentially my email address because that's what we've declared as the name for any user it's going to pass it into the find by uh, find by name async which should assign it to user but notice that the assignment to user is of a type task application user so that means I need to use the await keyword here and that's going to be fine for assignment there to that variable, but of course our compiler doesn't like this because we need to make the containing scope async. We should probably also do this for the claims. 
And as usual, I like to wrap for my actions and my methods on classes that are asynchronous. I wrap them up in a task. So let's go ahead and do that. And I need to bring in the namespace here for running tasks. Okay. Now I can pass in our user to this get claims async. And that's the only parameter that the get claims async requires. Now that will give me a I list of type system.security.claims.claim. So let's see what these look like. I'm gonna save this. Let's run our application again. But notice that I haven't closed out of my browser. I should still have those cookies in my browser that says that I'm logged in. So let's just go ahead and run it. Okay, I'm just gonna close this error page that came up because we uh, decided to you know, stop our application there after we hit the breakpoint. And now, since again, I'm still logged in here, let's go to the member home controller, the index action. And now if we take a look at the claims, we'll find a count of zero. So there are no claims, but we just saw a bunch of claims on that user. Well, that's because get claims async is actually inspecting what we have in a table here in our Contoso database. And that's the ASP.NET user claims. Okay, so this is actually where all of our claims reside. So how do we add a claim to a user? I'm gonna once again stop our application here and I'm gonna kind of wedge in here. I'm gonna do a user manager add claim async. And this takes a type of user, which I'm gonna pass in as the user that we found based upon me being logged in. And again, I just wanna point out that this user that I'm getting here is me, but it doesn't have to be. It could be any user in the application when we're going out and finding the, uh, you know, getting the user through our user manager and assigning it to user. And then eventually we're using the get claims async here. This could be any user at all in our application. We just need to go out and get it from the database or from the user manager first. It does not necessarily have to be the currently logged in user, but we're just doing it here for this example since it's easy and I'm the only one that currently is in the system. So now for our add claims async, I need two parameters. The first one is of course the user. The second one is the claim. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a new system security claims claim. And just to make this a little prettier, I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna add it to our using statements up here. All right, and it's just gonna clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna add a new claim here, and I can pass in several different types of uh, parameters to our constructor. I could use a reader, a binary reader. I could use a string type and a string value. I could do a reader and a subject. I could do a type, value, and value type. I could use a type value value type and issuer. I can do a type value value type issuer, original issuer. So you can see basically all of those different properties that are available on a claim, I can pass in here in the constructor of a claim. Now the one I'm interested in is just really this one here of the type and the value. That should be good enough for our purposes. So I'm gonna say that I'm gonna create a claim called first name and I need to pass in the value, which would be Steve, so I'm just gonna pass it in for me. And I do need to add that extra parenthesis at the end there. And of course, this doesn't the compiler doesn't like it because it's not being awaited, so I need to add the await. And now we're going to add a claim to this user, which is me. And then we're gonna take a look at the claims after we've added the user, and let's see how many we have now. So let's go ahead and run our application. And once again, I'm still logged in technically because I still have the cookie from when I first logged in. Now let's go to member home. And let's take a look at the index action here. And let's look at the claims. And we can see now there is a count of one claim. And we can see that the first name is Steve. And we can even expand it out and we can see the issuer's local authority. 
the subject is null because we didn't give it a subject, which would have been basically me, uh, a type, and we have a value, and we have a value type, which is string, which was automatically picked up. So we've successfully added a claim to the user, and if we go to our database and take a look at the ASP.NET user claims table, we'll now see that there is, in fact, a new record in here. A claim type of first name, claim value of Steve, and we can again see that the user ID is that C4DEC96A. So that's actually storing the claim in our database for every time that the user logs in, that claim will be added. And anywhere in our application, we can add these claims to those users. And that makes for a very nice way to kind of put in any type of claim that we want. It doesn't have to be specifically a role like we saw before. We can add any type of claim to put really any information in that we want. Now, what about removing claims? Well, let's stop our application once again. And this time, instead of using add claim async, let's remove a claim. So we're gonna do await user manager, remove claim async. And we need to pass in a user and a claim. So we're gonna pass in user, which we're already getting up here. And then we need to pass in the claim. Well, that claim is something that we need to get first. So I need to get the claim that is currently first name. How do we do that? Let's do this. I'm gonna say var claims. Uh, I'm gonna say var stored claims actually is equal to await user manager get claims. So I'm gonna get the claims async first. I'm gonna pass in the user, okay? Now, once I've got the stored claims, now what I'm gonna to need to do is get specifically the one that I wanna remove. So I'm gonna do var claim to remove equals stored claims. And this is nothing more than a, than a collection, right? So we have this claim, uh, the stored claims are a I list of claim, which means that we can use some link expressions to get it. I'm gonna do first or default, and notice I'm not getting any IntelliSense, that's because I need to bring in the namespace of system.link, and now I can use this first or default to go and grab on our claims, the one where the type is called first name. Now that's gonna go and grab that claim that we want to remove, and now I can pass that in as the claim that I want to remove from the user. Okay, so let's save this one more time, and let's run our application. So once again, I'm still logged in, so I can go to the member home controller, and we process the removal of that claim, so now when we take a look at our total list of claims, we can see we're back to zero. And in fact, if we open up our table of ASP.NET user claims, we will once again see that the table is empty. So there you guys go. That is how you can find out all the claims that are on the currently logged in user using the user property on the controller base class. And of course, we can also add and remove and view the currently stored claims on a user that we are storing in the database for them. In an upcoming video, we're gonna to start to see how we can use these claims to actually add some authorization to our application. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, bye-bye. If you would be interested in early access to our videos, live monthly Q and A's, your name in the credits, or one-on-one -on -one sessions, please visit us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash programming made easy. Yeah.